All right, guys, I'm trying something new here. So I just bought some Barnes Match Burners 140 grain boat tail hollow points. So let's take a look at this. These are good looking little bullets, uh, kind of traditional looking 6.5 millimeter BTHPs, 140 grains. So I went through the box and I length sorted them from base to ogive, which means the uh, tool reads off the shoulder of the bullet right here and then the bottom of the bullet because these hollow points don't sit perfectly flat. It's hard to measure their length and uh, the ogive is what's gonna engage with the rifling anyway, so it's better to measure off the ogive. I measured them all out to different lengths and I wrote down the lengths and sorted them all into columns. All of these bullets had the exact same length, except for the ones sitting back there. They're plus or minus a half thousandths. The ones sitting on the paper are a half thousand short. The ones sitting off the paper are a half thousand long. At this point, I weighed them out. So all I had done at that point is measured how long they were. Then I measured how much they weigh. You can see the range here, 140.4 to 139.9, with the majority being 140.2 and 140.1. The ones on the back are lined up in these columns as well. I just had to basically keep them separate so I knew which ones were long and short. Now, I've got six sets of five shot groups. So these are the bullets I'm going to be using right here. Now it's time to go weight sort some brass and then we're gonna try and come up with the most accurate match ammunition possible. And one way of doing that is by sorting the base to ogive and the weights of the bullets as well. So this will be a five shot group. These, this column right here will serve as two five shot groups, two five shot groups and one five shot group. Let's go sort some brass. All right, just did a bunch of weight sorting and sorted out all my brass and then remembered I have to tumble it in 20 seconds. So I've got to uh, finish processing my brass. So be careful when you're doing this and think ahead and make sure your brass prep is done before you sort it all out because that was a total waste of time. All right, so something I've been wanting to get into is uh, neck turning. And the whole idea of it is that the necks of the cases are not perfectly concentric and that you're gonna have a thick side and a thin side, and one side's gonna add more pressure and it's not gonna be just absolutely perfect. So, I bought a K&M Precision Shooting Products neck turner. This little guy right here, uh, little tiny guy, um, for reference. So the way these work, it's got a pilot right here, this little silver knob that sticks out. So the neck of the case is supposed to slip down onto that pilot. My full length resizing dies size the, the neck smaller than this pilot is, so they don't fit. I can't push it down on there and get it to go on. To remedy this, K&M Precision also sells an expander mandrel. So basically it tapers up, it starts out small so you can get the mouth of the case on there, right there, and then it goes up larger to where it will expand the mouth of your case so that it can fit over this little guy right here. So this just uses standard uh, threads that your press has. And so you just dump that in your press. This has a little adjustable screw on the bottom. And basically what happens is as you push your brass up onto the die, you want the bottom, you want the screw to hit the bottom of the brass and stop it from crushing your brass into the top of this die. So this is expanding, uh, this is an expander mandrel, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up all my case necks uh, to this expander mandrel size. That's gonna uh, give me less neck tension on my bullets, so I'm probably gonna end up single feeding these when I shoot for groups, um, because it's reducing the neck tension on these. But it's supposed to give you more consistent uh, velocities, lower standard deviations, things like that. And also with this expander mandrel, uh, it's gonna be more consistent than my uh, cheap full length resizing die is. I'm not going to neck turn these right now. Um, I will get into it at a later point in this series. Uh, however, I don't have a ball micrometer to make sure I know what I'm doing before I neck turn them all. And I don't wanna ruin my lot of brass because uh, this Atlas Development Group brass is really nice and I just don't wanna waste it. So for now, I'm just gonna do uh, expander mandrel neck sizing. So I'll open up these necks a little bit more and to do that, I'm going to need some Imperial sizing die wax. 
I'm sure you've seen this stuff around different channels. It's just like a little waxy stuff and uh, get some on your finger and then you can wipe it on your case if you're gonna resize it or whatever. What I have to do is put it on a Q-tip and then you top, pop out your case and then you wipe it around the inside of your case mouth. It goes into your press. You're gonna put your expander mandrel in your press, lift the ram, it'll smash it up and around the expander mandrel, pull it down and your case neck has been resized. So I'm gonna do that and uh, then we'll see you guys at the next step of the process. All right, taking a look at what I'm doing here. I've got my little Q-tip, it's got some wax on it, so I'm just sticking that in the case neck, spinning it around, spinning the case around, making sure I get some kind of up on the shoulder of the case mouth right here. We're gonna drop this on the shell holder and then easily go around that screw, nice and gentle, go up to here. Uh, I have lubricated the expander mandrel as well. Uh, if you're doing this, you might wanna do that. And then it goes down. Pull it down, and I've been doing all these twice. Cool, so that's been pulled out. Um, I haven't done this to all my cases, but I'm gonna show you guys me doing this. Um, I'm gonna take clean Q-tips uh, at the end of this and come in and wipe out all this excess lube, and I'm actually not gonna tumble these. I'm gonna keep them organized. This redding sizing that I wax, uh, I don't know this for a fact, so don't take it from me, but I'm pretty sure it won't mess with the powders and whatnot as it goes through. It might catch a couple grains as it like tries to flow in when I'm throwing charges, but I'll just tap those in and the bullet being seated will also push those out of the case neck as well, so it shouldn't be a problem. Outside of that, these cases have already been tumbled, so they're pretty clean. Rock and roll. Also, notice how dirty my reloading bench is. If your reloading bench isn't dirty, do you even reload? Honestly? I mean, I clean mine almost every time I make a video, and it's always messy, but you know, I digress. Taking a quick look here, I've got my weight sorted brass, I've got my ogive measured and weight sorted bullets all going along here to go with the different weight sorted brass. So all this is organized, just keeping it nice and organized, doing one stage at a time, and try not to mix stuff up, but eventually I will. I'll screw it up somehow. Uh, it'll go like that because it always does, but we'll find out. Okay, I wanted to discuss some things about this load development that I'm doing while I'm reloading. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two different overall lengths. I'm going to do one at magazine length to see uh, how they shoot when they're loaded at mag length because I have an AR-10 bolt-action rifle. I prefer to feed at a mag length, but also I shoot F-class, which is mandatory to shoot single shot. So I just drop that on a little bobsled in my magazine and then I throw them in one round at a time. So if they shoot like exceptionally well over the uh, shorter mag length, um, then obviously I'll just use them for that. Uh, hopefully there's not a huge accuracy difference and I can run them at magazine length. So I'm gonna set one at 20 thousandths off the lands and I'm gonna set one at mag length, which is usually like 2.810. So what that ends up being overall length. Um, a lot of people have asked me why I measure overall length uh, from base to the tip of the bullet on my AR-15 and sometimes in my AR-10. The reason for that is because I have to fit it in the magazine. Um, yes, I could establish an overall length and then measure the base to ogive and then start going off of that, which I've done before. However, uh, with my AR-15, I run it almost like to maximum magazine length. Maximum mag length is like 2.260 and I'll run it like 2.255 or 2.260. So if it's even two or three thousandths, the bullet tips will drag on the magazine and cause malfunctions. So I have to be aware of that, and that's why I measure from the base to the tip of the bullet on my AR-15. I don't even have a uh, ogive comparator for my AR-15 for that reason. Uh, I did take my 147 grain ELDs out this week, and those shot a third of an inch, three-shot group, and then the five shot group was closer to half inch, something like that. Standard deviations were extremely low. So that's one thing I do want to mention. Although I'm going for extreme accuracy here, I don't really care for maximum velocity. Um, I can dial that. However, I do want really tight, consistent velocities. So I want low standard deviations, like single digits down into, I mean, hopefully like, seven to five feet a second something like that which i've accomplished with my 147 elds 
Um, I just haven't taken the time to weight sort everything and really try and get them to shoot that awesome. So hopefully by the end of this, I'll have a round that just is killer on paper, just shoots the same hole, has really tight standard deviations. Um, this bullet has, a, I'm sure, still has a good ballistic coefficient, um, not quite as high as some others, but that's fine. And if I can get these all figured out and shooting excellent, then I'm gonna take them to an F-class match and see if I can up my scores just by really fine tuning my ammunition. I think that's what's holding me back a little bit. Granted, I'm still new to the sport and I definitely need to learn wind reading a little more. But again, I digress. That's what this series is about. Tight standard deviations, tight groups on paper. Um, velocity is not all that important. I really don't care. I've got the 147 ELD load figured out. So if I wanna go shoot a mile or 1500 yards or something like that, I'll load up more of those. So, get back to work before I forget to uh, lubricate the neck on one of these. And we'll catch you guys in the next video segment. Alright, now I'm going to check to see where my bullet's going to run into my lands. Um, the way you do this, you take a lighter, hold it underneath the bullet, and eventually it'll start adding some black soot. Admittedly, I've done this with a live round, although I don't recommend it because it's scary as hell the whole time it's getting all hot. The bullet gets extremely hot and whatever powder is touching the base of the bullet is going to get hot. Right now the entire piece of brass is warm because I really cooked this one up because there's nothing in it so I don't care if it gets hot. Um, when I do the bullet with powder in it um, I do it a lot more slowly but again I don't recommend it but it's your life do what you want this is America you have freedoms. So I'm gonna drop this into the chamber I'm trying not to scratch the bullet too much although you always scratch the bullet a whole bunch so nice and easy let's close the bolt i'm gonna get it to there we go there's a fired piece of brass so it's uh nice and snug in there lift the bullet pull it back now this has real neck tension on it um, i take a fired case and i crimp it to where the bullet can slide in and out this one's got real neck tension it's been neck sized only and uh it should this is like loading a real so let's take a look at this thing so what we're looking at here see that solid ring all the way around there right about there that thing's hitting the lands so what I do is I look at how thick that ring is and then I back it off that distance so let's put the let's push this in another ten thousandths with the seating die and then we'll do this again once I don't get anything on the smoke. Uh, once the smoke comes out nice and clean, then I go ahead and push it back another 20, and it's 20 thousandths off my lands. That's how I do it. So here's something very interesting. See how I've got that black ring in the middle of this bullet? The upper half, I've cleaned off. So watch. When I put this up in my comparator, it stops at the top of that line. Right? black smoke and that's where it stops so when I pull it out of the comparator it leaves a clean ring around there when I just seated this bullet it touched the rifling on the bottom part where it's clean so the difference between where my ogive comparator reads and the difference between where my rifling touches is that black line right there a couple thousandths on the bullet just because it's interesting thought I'd share that you know what guys, I think this is going to be a good point to end the number one video, that way it doesn't drag on out forever. So taking a look real quick at uh, some measurements I took, this is 2.235 from the base to the ogive of the bullet with my comparator tool, which is 20 thousandths off where the lands touch the rifling. That didn't make any sense, where the bullet touches the lands. Um, and then. 2.835 overall length from the bottom to the tip of the bullet is 2.835. So this is a dummy round. I'm going to use this to make uh, set the distance for my other bullets. But of course, I'm going to set half of this batch to 2.810. Now, I'm planning on starting out with H4350. I'm going to do three separate charges, five shot groups. And I'm going to shoot the short ones, and I'm going to shoot the long ones. My hands are covered in uh, lighter smoke. That's what's coming off of this bullet. 
So this is kind of all the weird stuff that I was going to do anyway. It, uh, all the weight sorting and measuring and all that fun stuff. Basically at this point, the brass is completely prepped. Everything's all sorted. Now all I have to do is prime powder, bullet, seat, all that jazz. And we're going to take it out in my Uinta Precision. This is a bolt action AR-10 upper. And uh, we're going to go see how these things shoot. Like I say, I'm going for precision shooting, nice tight groups. We'll see how these bullets shoot. Um, I'm hoping that they shoot awesome. Barnes bullets are from Utah, which I'm based in Utah as well. Uh, anytime I go on a road trip to southern Utah, I pass right by this place. It's right off the main I-15 that goes through the state. So I really appreciate you guys watching, uh, listening to me go on about stuff that I pretend like I understand. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully I can get these things to shoot. We'll find out in the next upcoming videos. The next video is going to be me loading these up. Thanks so much for your time. We'll talk to you guys in the next video.